So types of long-term memory. Now you need to be aware of the three types of long-term memory. They are episodic, semantic and procedural. So in terms of the three types of memory, we have episodic memories. Now they are memories of events that have happened to yourself. They are episodes of our life. So for example, if I was to ask you to recall the first day at school, you should be able to remember maybe what you felt, what the day was like, you'd be able to recall it. Now they are quite complex memories. They are time stamped, so they happened at certain times and we have to be conscious to recall them. So you have to go back and think about the ability to recall that memory. Semantic memories are knowledge of the world around us. So they are facts, they are meanings of words, signs and symbols. So if I was to ask you to set, recall the capital of France, you would say Paris. Now they are shared knowledge. So everyone will have semantic memory in the capital of Par uh, France is Paris. Um, the H is the atomic symbol of hydrogen. They are less personal because everybody has that shared information. Now procedural memories are skills or actions about how to do things. They are things that we have learned. So it could be how to ride a bike, how to sew, how to cook, how to bake. Now we should be able to recall these without much effort or awareness because it is an automatic recall. So if you've done it with enough times, you should be able to recall it quite easily without any awareness of doing so. So the saying of, it's like riding a bike, once you've learned how to do it, it is an automatic recall in being able to do that skill. Now you might get some describe or explain questions in the exam. So distinguish between procedural memory and semantic memory. So you'd need to say procedural memory is and give some information and go whereas semantic memory is. So it's important to have that connective because you have been asked to distinguish. So to state differences between them. Also, you might get simple tick boxes, multiple choice ones. So information stored with reference to time and place refers to your ticket. Information not available for conscious inspection refers to and you tick the information. Similarly, you could get an application question. So this is where you use your knowledge of the types of memory and apply it to a novel situation that you aren't aware of. So for example, Annie can still skateboard even though she hasn't skated for many years. Jermaine can still recall what happened on his first day at university even though it was ages ago. Billy remembers the names of the tools he needed to repair the broken tap. Identify the three types of long-term memory and explain how each type is shown in one of the examples above. So now this is where having knowledge of the specification is really important. So identify the three types of long-term memory. Now, you know the three types are episodic, procedural, and semantic. So you'd say episodic memory is to do with recalling events that have happened to an individual person. In this situation, it would be Jermaine who can still recall his first day at university. You'd then talk about procedural memories, are memories to do with a skill or an action and can be recalled with little effort. So for example, Annie can still skateboard because it is a skill that she has learnt even though she hasn't done it for many years. The third type of memory is semantic memory. This is to do with knowledge of the world around us and words, signs and symbols. So Billy remembers the names of tools that he needs to repair the broken tap. If we look at evaluation then, Again, this is generally for um, theories, explanations. So types of long term memory by Tolving is a theory. It's an explanation. So we're going to use the acronym of SCAM. Now, you might not always have um, information to fit in with the each letter of the acronym. It's just to help you if you get stuck in the exam 
for evaluation points. So we have supporting evidence. So we've got case study support. So we have Clive Waring and HM. So their episodic memory was damaged. So they couldn't remember episodes or information about their own lives, but they still had procedural memory. So Clive could still play the piano. So he was unable to recall episodes of his life. So he was unable to recall that he was a composer, but he could still play the piano. So this shows that long-term memory is in fact different. So it's not just one type of long-term memory, there are different types. Also, we have supporting evidence from brain scans. So PET scans have indicated that episodic memory is located in the right prefrontal cortex, whereas semantic is located in the left prefrontal cortex. So the fact that different information is stored in different parts of the brain would suggest that they, there is more than one type of long-term memory. Whereas we have contradictory evidence. So Cohen's and Squires says that actually there aren't three types of long term memory. There is only two and they are declarative and non declarative. It has real life application, so it is useful. So it's been helped uh, used to help improve memory. So episodic memory is generally the most effective affected as we age. So participants who have been trained in memory improvement did better in their recall of episodic memory than the control group did. So this might be really beneficial for individuals that might have the onset of Alzheimer's, which affects the episodic memory. Also, there are problems with the way that this has been tested. So using clinical evidence or clinical populations, so individuals with amnesia such as HM or Clive Waring, means there isn't control over extraneous variables. And most of the data that we have to go on is subjective and retrospective. So we didn't know that Clive was going to have an infection that led to his impairment of his short term memory. Therefore, he wasn't studied before that happened. So the data of what he was like before his amnesia is retrospective and it is subjective. It is based on what his friends and family says. Therefore, it is hard to apply those findings. Also, the use of clinical populations means it's hard to apply the findings to people without a brain injury. So an essay type question you might get is discuss types of long term memory. So again, remember the command word discuss means describe and evaluate. So for this one, I would do my AO1 paragraphs on the three types of long term memory. So a brief paragraph on episodic memory a brief paragraph on semantic memory and a brief paragraph on procedural memory. Then I would do three to four evaluation points on long term memory. So remember, you get marks for the flow and the coherent and the clear structure. So don't do strength, weakness, strength. Do all of your weaknesses together and all of your strengths together. So it flows in a logical sequence.